All right, guys, well, we just got the new update, 5% power increase. And, uh, well, it's winter time here. It's cold outside, and we'd rather stay here in the dyno cell doing a little testing. So first we'll put my car on, and then we'll put Sasha's car and uh, see what happened. What do you think? 5%? Yeah, so the last one we did, we, there was a claimed 5% increase, and we didn't see much. Um, so I've always been a little bit skeptical. So we're going to put on the dyno now. Obviously... You know, it's been a few months since the last time we dynoed the car. The dyno is very consistent, but to be able to measure within one or one and a half percent is pretty difficult. So if we see an increase that looks like something and it's all the way across, then we'll, we'll give Tesla the benefit of the doubt. Um, but if it looks like it's just matching up with the other ones, uh, we're gonna have, to, gonna have to say something. But it looks like people have already been talking about zero to 60 times being faster. Yeah, quarter mile. Uh, quarter mile. So it looks like it's a real thing. So we're just going to kind of quantify it a bit. We've driven the cars around to kind of warm up the battery and the motor. We had the, the destination as a supercharger, so it was pre-warming the battery as well. Since it's pretty cold here, uh, we're just trying to get the battery up to a reasonable temperature. And again, this is not an overly scientific, perfectly controlled test. If it was, we would be exactly monitoring the battery uh, voltage and temperature and we would have done so in our previous tests, so we did not do those things. So if you're going to write comments about a little nonsense, don't bother. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, this is just a ballpark video to, to see roughly, you know, within within one to one and a half percent uh, what we're talking about here. So let's do it. But Dino says yes. And now, Sasha, try to break the windows. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, we're still getting over the Cybertruck right now. It's been pretty... Okay, so we just finished Jesse's car. We did a couple pulls at 95% state of charge. And comparing to the last time we died on Jesse's car at 95% state of charge, the torque is exactly the same. I mean, if you look at this line here, it's within uh, 0 0.4 pound-feet of torque. Um, so that's a pretty good um, indication that the dyno is reading the same and that the... the Inverters outputting the same amount of current and, and producing the same amount of torque and the power boost did come into play And it is pretty significant. You can see once this thing drops into field weakening There's a big gain of about 15 horsepower give or take across the board and that works out to like <clears throat> Exactly 5% actually it was five and a half percent Right here, and I think around five percent right here There's a little dip right there, but that's probably uh, just the dyno. So it looks like Tesla's optimized the um, the inverter and field weakening, and it's something called overmodulation. You can Google and learn about that. I'm not an expert on it, but it seems like they've improved that, and so effectively this is really great when you're at high speed. We've only run this thing out to 11,000 RPM, but if we went all the way, I think you would see uh, you know, a 15 to 16 horsepower increase which is pretty significant when, you know, at high speeds, this thing only has about 230 horsepower. So the percentage gain is actually higher uh, the faster you go, since the overall power is lower. So yeah, it's, the 5% is real, and uh, it makes sense why people are seeing this, this increase. Uh, especially, I would imagine, I haven't looked into it, but did you say some quarter mile times were faster too? Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I would guess the quarter mile time gain would be, would be bigger than the 0 to 60, because until you get up to... I don't have it in front of me, but around 70 kilometers an hour, the power is the same. So for 0 to 60, most of that acceleration is pretty much the same, uh, and it isn't until you get above roughly here 5,000 RPM motor speed that you're going to see that, that increase of power kick in.
this is what we're looking at here is a dynograph from the long range Model 3 long range rear wheel drive Model 3 from the original power that it made when we got it in uh, early 2018 to that uh, quote, quote unquote 5% power upgrade that was talked about around, was it last May? Yeah, earlier this year. Earlier 2019. So this is why we're a little bit skeptical. You can see that the actually the power wasn't higher at all. So the solid line is after the power increase. But there was more torque below this uh, field weakening point um, by about roughly 10 pound feet of torque or so. So of all the other dynographs we've ever checked, they've never made as much torque. They've never made 326 pound feet of torque. So it looks like that was an increase. Uh, most likely the inverter was just pushing a little bit harder, but we didn't see those gains translate all the way through. And, and again, that could have just been a control issue. It could have been that the battery was a bit colder, and so uh, the power didn't carry through all the way. But that's interesting to note. So that's the first quote-unquote update, and we're going to now compare this update to both of those. Okay, so this graph here is the long-range rear-wheel drive from today compared to the most power that this thing's ever made. Now, the most power this thing's ever made was before the earlier 5% update, and so that's why you see the big difference in torque down low here. The looks like there are gains here, so that's, that's the, the good news. They're not quite as big, I would say, as the standard range plus car, but um, there's a little hump right here that takes the peak power from 324 to 338 and then the gains aren't quite as large for a second uh, but then it opens back up again and this is pretty significant because on the racetrack these are kind of the speeds we would be going at so there's about a <coughs> five and a half percent increase uh, at speeds you know around the 80 mile an hour range give or take so so that's pretty cool it looks like there is a, the same sort of thing as a standard range car. The, the field weakening um, is just a little bit more efficient. And, yeah, pretty much happy all around. What's the peak horsepower figure? So now the peak power is 338 at the wheels, which is, which is pretty decent. But, again, that's just for one tiny short speed window. And as soon as you get go faster than that, it drops off. So... If you were going to compare this to another another car like a BMW or something, it would probably be similar on the racetrack to something that has around 270, 260 horsepower, depending on the speed of the track. And we're going to wrap up with an overlay of the long range rear wheel drive to the standard range plus rear wheel drive. So you can see that the the long range has a ton more power at low speed, which we already knew, a bunch more torque uh, f right from from a stop basically. But once you get going really quick that gap closes up a fair bit and it's only about 15 horsepower more uh, really high speeds so it, it looks like Jesse's car is still gonna be faster than mine on a, on a really fast track and maybe my car will be faster than his on a, on a slower track uh, that 200 pounds or 250 pounds whatever it is that's a pretty significant difference and I don't think 15 horsepower is gonna cover that so there you go Santa Range Plus a cool track car and the long range Long range is still the best. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs>